Welcome to Charts Today. My name is David Linton and today's edition for Friday the 1st of September comes to you from London. And today I'm going to focus a little bit on the gold price, but uh, we'll start just by looking at currencies. The, the dollar, of course, has a big impact on commodity prices, especially precious metals. Uh, the dollar has been rising quite strongly the last few days, but just pulling back a little bit here. Still bearish, medium and long term. And the fact that we broke this support level, uh, this key level that runs through here, is just pulling us down. Strangely, the dollar is still long-term bullish on the point and figure chart, that on the 1% chart. It's just, of course, this chart will be the, the last one to change. And even on the medium-term chart, we've just pulled back to a support level. So the dollar could still recover from here, but there's no signs in the short-term chart yet of that happening. We need to see this um, level here, <coughs> 93 of the 30 breaking um, to activate that new high and of course we'd then have these resistance levels to fight. So for the moment uh, the dollar is uh, still looking bearish medium and long term, short term a little bit of a recovery. The euro has come below the cloud short term giving us a new downside target of 114 but we need to move below that 118.30 level to activate that and so we need to take out this low that we saw yesterday uh, for that, that to really be activated. At the moment, the, the euro looks bullish, medium and long term, but no real clear upside target. So it's very interesting that we've, we've deactivated um, the downside targets here, but we don't yet have any clear upside targets. This column, when it does lock, will produce a thrust target, uh, but we haven't yet got that uh, happening. So still um, some resistance to fight there as well. Japanese yen, a uh, safe haven uh, normally has, the dollar has been actually improving against the yen. So the yen is, uh, the dollar is still bearish medium term, long term trying to make this transition. Um, but for the moment, the, do the dollar has the upper hand here. Uh, looking at sterling <coughs> against the dollar, fairly mixed picture, sitting at this 129 level, still bearish long term. Medium term, sterling has recovered a bit against the dollar. Uh, we've got this new uh, 133 target, which uh, would be interesting if we break that. But at the moment, uh, there's no clear signs that sterling will break that 130 level again. Uh, looking at sterling against the uh, euro, again, we see sterling has appreciated a little bit here. But in terms of the medium and long term picture, very little has changed. Uh, and looking at against the Swiss franc, uh, we see here that uh, sterling has again just recovered slightly, but lots of downside targets hanging over um, the price here and still bearish medium and long term. <coughs> Against the Australian dollar, fairly mixed picture, but medium and long term, um, the Aussie dollar has the upper hand against sterling. Uh, US stock markets, we look at the S&P 500, <coughs> was um, bullish yesterday, quite a big move. And the NASDAQ also a big move, now nudging new highs. That's a new uh, closing high this week if we can hold that. And so um, US markets <coughs> are running again. And looking at the Dow, we see much the same thing. The Russell 2000 also recovering quite strongly. So US markets coming out of the woods. Looking at the uh, S&P future, we see here that, uh, th that we're also uh, up slightly today and the NASDAQ. So we're probably going to go into the holiday weekend in the US on a, on a good note. Uh, looking at uh, the FTSE 100, recovering here on the short term chart, but a real shortage of uh, upside targets on the short term. But FTSE is just looking a little bit better. And FTSE 250, much the same thing. We do have some upside targets here to play for. So um, we may see some action here on this chart. But the long-term picture, still hard to read with a shortage of, of long-term thrust targets. And the DAX, much the same picture here. And still quite a lot of downside targets hanging over us on the DAX. If we look on this medium-term chart, we've got targets of 2.63 and 3.4%. So German equities still under pressure with that stronger euro. Uh, the Nikkei recovering slightly on the weaker yen against the dollar. And looking at the Hang Seng, bullish on all three charts, as is Shanghai, now looking pretty good all round and the Sensex recovering as well, so the Indian market looking quite good. The Australian market slightly up, but not looking anywhere near as good as the Asian markets. Uh, Brent crude uh, did recover very strongly yesterday. We saw a big bounce in the price, so that's taken us into short-term bullish territory, but the picture is still very mixed, a lot of volatility for, for Brent. WTI didn't quite get the same run, and we're still looking fairly bearish here uh, on the uh, short-term picture. 
US nat gas jumped yesterday, so we are just seeing now um, some quite interesting targets here, 309 and 329. So that's one and a half and nearly eight uh, percent. So and then we've got three and a half percent on the medium term chart. So we are just seeing nat gas um, looking a little bit better. Copper continues to run and this chart looks pretty bullish all round. We've got targets of two and three percent in the short term. Heating oil has also been running in quite a, a clear fashion in an uptrend uh, for quite some weeks actually. So we're seeing heating oil nudging new multi-year highs. So very different picture there from oil and, and that gas. And coffee um, still bearish below the cloud on the short term. Cocoa recovering somewhat. Uh, cotton also recovering a little bit. Uh, sugar also recovering on the short term, but medium term still has work to do. And wheat looking bullish in the short term chart as well. Soybeans recovering short term. And the corn future also just running higher. So that's also looking um, better in the short term, but still very bearish in the medium long term. Now we take a look at gold. Gold, um, and I said at the start we'd have a, a more in-depth look at gold. Gold recovered uh, again quite strongly yesterday, coming back into the 320s. We've got this high of a few days ago here at uh, about 326 that we've got to get through. But interestingly, we're starting to look more and more bullish. The long term chart here, uh, we've got uh, 1530, that's 16 percent upside and a massive seventeen hundred dollars. That's the thrust off the low that we saw um, way back in um, 2000, the beginning of 2016. So this big th move here that took us um, through the, the, the cloud. So if we look at the longer term chart here, we see that gold was really in this um, downtrend and then recovered strongly. In fact, if we go right the way back, gold had a massive run for about a decade, pulled right the way back, and now it's just in this big recovery mode. The big question is, can gold then start to run and take out and make new highs? Very similar to the oil situation where crude oil got to 147. Um, can we ever get above that level again? Looks unlikely on crude, but will gold manage to do it? So the interesting thing is we are seeing a bullish transition on the uh, long term chart. We've got these upside targets for the long term. The short term has been bullish and taking out this $1,300 level has really um, left behind the uncertainty. Gold is now running again and we've got a 5.8% upside target to 1396. So let's say 1400. And then if we look at the short term, <clears throat> we are just fighting this high here of about 1326 and so um, interestingly we're seeing here um, 1367 is really the target area at the moment that's 3.6 percent away we've got a new thrust target and we'll have an even uh, another new one just on this chart here so uh, we will see here that we will get a target there as well um, uh, this column locked and then activated 366 367 this is clustering so it does suggest that we'll see gold into the 360s quite soon and 1440 um, so 7% upside um, if we hit that level now taking a look at even, even closer <coughs> look at the one minute chart if we look at the one minute chart on gold here we see the picture all of this data you can do this on any instrument just hit the T key and now we start to get a picture. Now this is a two by three chart. So we just change it to a one by three. This is a, a more likely box size. 1365 off the thrust that we just saw um, on yesterday's move. And interestingly, we haven't activated that target yet. <clears throat> if we move higher, we will activate that. But all roads pointing to around 1360. If we go to a smaller box size still, We've got 1328, that would take out this 1326 level. And if we go to an even smaller box size still, this is a, a, a 25 cent chart, we're seeing 1328 again. And then we can go even smaller still. And we're now getting right down into the detail, 1325, 1328. So once we get to that 1328, gold making new highs again, those will be the headlines. That then sets us up for moving to that 1360 level. So gold looking pretty strong. Looking at um, <coughs> the... Silver chart, much the same picture here. We've got good upside targets. Precious metals recovering through on the daily chart, silver. So precious metals starting to look pretty good all round. US Treasury yields sitting at 2.21%. That's on the 10-year. Apple making new all-time highs. Really significant there. If we look at the, the charts here, we see Apple just marching forward. So new all-time highs for Apple. 
Google recovering quite strongly. Remember, this has been the chart that's worried us quite a bit. We're now back through on the short term, looking bullish again. And Amazon has been a little bit of a worry for us as well. Um, so now starting to look a little bit better there too, finding some support. And Facebook uh, moving quite strongly yesterday. So that's also now starting to look good with lots of upside targets. And Microsoft also had a good move yesterday and activating this upside target of 86, that's 16%, 84, 86, that's a cluster, says that we're going high on Microsoft, just a really clear uptrend there. That's it for today. Until tomorrow, until Monday in the Euro, in Europe, Tuesday, for those of you in the US, have a good holiday weekend. And our thoughts are with everybody in the cleanup in Houston. Um, hope you all get back into your homes safely and, and things get better. Until next week, happy charting. See you then.